Hey guys, um, so this video was going to be about the average day for me, um, but then kind of as I was editing it and putting it together, um, I realised I don't really have an average day. Every day is different and kind of different times of the year are different for me as well. So this video is gonna be kind of like a compilation and it's more like an average week or year or I don't know kind of period of time for me as a potter. Every potter is different so every potter um, spends their time differently so this isn't kind of representative of what life is like as the average potter, it's just what life is like for me. Um, but if you're anything like me and you're a little bit nosy and like to kind of peep inside um, people's lives, then you might enjoy this bit. Um, take a moment to like and subscribe. Uh, I've got better at asking you to do that. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. My day always begins with coffee, although these days I drink decaf, I still have about three cups a day. I normally just have filter, or if I'm feeling fancy, I'll treat myself to a coffee from our posh machine. This one is in one of my travel mugs. What I do day to day really depends on what time of year it is. September to December is my busiest months of the year, and I spend a lot of time making and posting then. I normally make in cycles, which takes me about six weeks from start of the process to finish product. So I just want to show you what my studio actually looks like. It doesn't look like it does on Instagram most of the time. Let me just turn you around. So there's my camera. Um, I was just doing some packing just before. I started filming and this is the chaos that is my studio on kind of like the average day so I have some that's wax resist actually um, messy tools all over the place my camera bag uh, stock that needs sorting um, this is uh, travel mugs which need to be kind of listed these are travel mugs which I threw yesterday and I need to cut off the wheel. Uh, this is just a big old mess which I need to clear up. The first thing I might do is check on my pots from the day before. I'll check how they're drying and if I need to slow them down or speed them up. I'll do this by moving them around my studio, putting them on a higher or lower shelf or using underbed storage boxes to control the drying. I might move some pots to my kiln shed to finish off drying. It's really warm in there. If I have fired my kiln, I'll check on the temperature and be counting down the hours until I can open it. I'll try and be patient and don't open my kiln until it's under 100 degrees centigrade. I spend at least a few hours a day on my computer, responding to questions from my Pottery Club members, replying to emails, creating content for my blog, YouTube or Instagram. This takes up way more time than you think. I'll do any writing or accounting in the mornings when my brain is at its freshest. Accounts are my least favorite job. Numbers just really aren't my thing. If I've done a shop update, then I'll spend a lot of my time packing orders. This is also a really time consuming job. I will clear my workbench and get out all of my packing materials which normally live in another shed in my garden. My little local post office shuts at 3pm so I can't be late. During a normal shop update I'll post orders out about twice a week but at busy times of the year like November I'll be at the post office four times a week or more. I also send out pottery treats to my pottery club members every three months. I might spend part of my day packing my kiln. This is another job which takes longer than you might think. It's like a giant Jenga puzzle trying to fit in all the pieces. I often have to pack it, 
unpack it and repack it to make sure I'm making most of the space. A full kiln is much more economical to fire, so I'll wait until I have enough work to fill it before I put on a firing. I'll normally only fire my kiln about once or twice a month. I've normally got too much work to fit in it all at once, especially in the glaze firings, so those pieces will have to wait until the kiln is full again. Reclaiming and recycling clay. I spend a lot of my time reclaiming clay. This doesn't tend to take a lot of brain power, just some elbow grease, so I tend to save that until the afternoons. I'm really lucky I have a studio assistant called Layla who comes to help me once or twice a week for a few hours and this is the kind of job she helps me with. This was filmed on a different day where my studio is a little tidier. If I'm throwing on the wheel, I'll clear my studio and my shelves so I have lots of surface space to place the work in order for it to dry. I'll normally only throw for about three or four hours maximum, taking regular breaks and stretching every 40 minutes. Throwing can be really hard on your body, so it's really important to take breaks. I'll normally prep, weigh and ball up clay one day, and then I'll throw the next. The pots will take two or three days to dry, to leather hard, and then I'll come back to the wheel and trim them a few days later. Throwing and trimming creates a lot of mess, so I spend an awful lot of time cleaning. There's an awful lot of cleaning involved in pottery. It does create a lot of mess and the dust from the clay is not good for you. So it's really important to stay on top of it. I'll clean my studio at least once a week to keep the dust to a minimum. I always wet clean using a big sponge and a bucket of water, washing away any clay stuck to the surfaces. I never use a broom as that creates too much dust. If I do use a hoover, I'll wear a respirator and open all the doors and windows. My hoover has a HEPA filter, but I'm still potentially creating dust. I always like my studios to be nice and clean if I have any students coming for a lesson. Every month I create a new tutorial for my pottery club. This can range from building confidence with your throwing, trimming your pots like a pro, how to avoid common glaze flaws, or making a specific project like a teapot, a mug, a vase, or decorating your pottery. I even cover business advice such as how to manage your studio, how to turn your hobby into a career. You can check out Pottery Club and all the tutorials available by following the link below this video. If I'm glazing work, I'll normally set aside two or three days to do this. It's yet another job which takes a lot longer than you may think. Firstly, I'll prep the pots by wet sanding them and wiping away any dust. I'll paint on wax resist if needed. I use dipping and pouring glazes as I find these are quicker and most economical. I make most of my glazes myself. I glaze the insides of the pots first, then I'll do the outsides. I'll leave my pots to dry overnight before they get loaded into the kiln. This helps prevent problems like crawling. Taking photos of my work, measuring dimensions and creating the listings on my website is another job which takes me back to my computer. Editing the photos is also quite time consuming. I don't change anything about the pots themselves, I will simply just take out distracting marks or any dust that I didn't spot. I always take photos using natural light, so I tend to do this in the mornings. One of my cats normally hangs out with me in my studio for part of the day. When you work for yourself, there's this old adage that says, you give up the nine to five to work 24 seven. And that's not too far from the truth. Certainly when you're just starting out, it's a lot of hard work building up a pottery business. Now I'm a little way in. I'm lucky that twice a week, I carve out the time to go hang out at a horse yard. I ride a horse called Kizzy. This is total relaxation for me and means I'm not thinking about work. It's really important for me to get out of my studio, otherwise I just simply wouldn't leave. I choose to work for myself for the freedom it allows me and means I can do things like this. Other things I can spend my week doing, 
can include, but are not exclusive to, making glazes, unpacking kilns, auditing and ordering packing materials, kiln and studio maintenance, etc, etc. And I'm sure there's a whole load of stuff that I haven't even mentioned here. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that little glimpse into an average day for me as a potter. Although every day is completely different, I always feel extremely lucky that I get to do what I do. And I am so, so grateful for guys like you who support me by subscribing to my channel, buying my work, or even joining Pottery Club. I hope to see some of you again soon. Bye!